Hello there, it's Andy Ewan from FormerServe once again. In this short How To and IBMI video set, we will be taking a look at ODBC, Open Database Connectivity. This is another great open source tool from IBM that can make our development go a lot smoother. Always one for that. I will show you how we can make our applications more scalable so they can be developed and run on platforms other than the IBM I. Here we can see our node application that needs to talk to the database on the IBM I. For that, we use a node module called IDB Connector. The problem is, if I try to develop locally on my PC, the application won't install because the connector doesn't find the IBM I. It's not running on that operating system. If we replace that connector with the ODBC driver, we can just replace the source in the ODBC settings to use whichever system we are connecting to, whether it's IBM I, Windows or AIX. The ODBC solution makes the application more scalable and easier to develop. A great addition. Now we have decided we want to go down the ODBC route for our applications, what do we need to do? Before we go any further, we need to install the ODBC driver for my PC, running Windows 10. The ODBC driver is part of IBM ACS, Access for Client Solutions package. The IBM ACS package is split into two parts. The main base package is filled with all the goodies we use day to day. 5250 emulation, run SQL scripts, HMC console, etc, etc. I nearly said HMS then, but that's another story. The other part which we need is operating system Pacific. I need the Windows application package of which the ODBC driver is included. This can be downloaded from IBM's main ACS page, which can be found on their website. I'll put the link in the description of this video. Once downloaded, run the install program. To test that it has been installed with all the ODBC components, use the Windows search facility to find ODBC administration. Under the driver tab, you should see three IBM drivers. The one I have highlighted is the IBM driver that IBM states we should use. The IBM I ACS ODBC driver. This is the driver we need to use in our applications. The others are for historical purposes and should be kept away from. The next part is to install ODBC on our IBM I. If we go back to the IBM ACS download page, we now need the PACE package. Download this file, then unzip to a directory on your IFS. Here we can see it in my Andy directory. Once on the IFS, we use yum to install the package. The name will change depending on the release of the download at the time you do it. So yum install and the name of the RPM package. I'll copy and paste that into yum. I already have this installed, so I'm not going to continue with this. I'm sure you get the drift. Now on to configuring ODBC on our RBMI server. In a shell window, if we type ODBC INST with the minus J flag, it shows where the data source configuration files are held. For this example, we are going to create a user data source which will be called .odbc.ini and it resides in my home directory. I'll be using VS Code to create this file. Let me fire up VS Code, navigate to my home directory and create a new file called .odbc.ini. The first line in square brackets is the data source name. Here we call it Galatea. The second line is just the description. The third line is the name of the ODBC driver we installed. IBM I Access ODBC Driver. The fourth line is the system name. 
The fifth and sixth lines are for user ID and passwords. That is optional. Then the SQL naming convention, zero equals SQL naming, whereas one equals system naming. Then any default libraries, delimited by commas, and that is it. VS Code automatically saves, so the configuration file is now there to use. Now we have installed ODBC on our server, let us test it. As part of the ODBC installation, IBM has provided a useful utility to test our connections. This is called iSQL. We just run the command with the name of the data source name, the DSN we created earlier, called Galatea in my example, and it will provide an SQL command window where we can input SQL statements to test our setup. So here we input iSQL Galatea. That's all connected, good start. Then any SQL statement. A nice simple select asterisk from qiws.qcustcdt, the sample customer database provided by IBM. That looks all good. ODBC is now installed and configured on our IBM I. For the final part of this video, I'll show you how we can write a quick Node.js program on our IBM I that outputs all of the customers from the iSQL example I demoed a couple of minutes ago. The first thing I'm going to do is create an NPM project with npm init minus y, so it answers all the prompts for me. Next we are going to install the ODBC package from npm. A npm i for install, then ODBC. That's chugging away. That will install ODBC and all its dependencies into the node-modules directory ready for us to use. A cat package.json will show that ODBC is a dependency of this project and at version 2.4.0. Firstly, let me fire up VS Code. Again, check out my excellent videos on Visual Studio Code if you need to. I'll create a new file on the IFS called odbc.js. Really original that. The first line is to import the ODBC module we've just installed. Then create a connection object for the ODBC configuration, where we call it connection config. It can be called whatever you like. The first line is the name of the data source we configured earlier, called Galatea. Then a connection timeout and a logging timeout, both optional. I'm not passing any user ID nor password. It will take them from the server job it connects to. Next we create a constant called connection that calls the odbc.connect function. Pass in the configuration object. It will then call an anonymous function with the parameters error and connection. We then check if any errors occurred. If so, bung them out to the console. Next run the query function with the SQL select string and call another anonymous function with the error and result variables. We then check if any errors occurred. If so, bung them out to the console. If there are no errors, output the result set to the console. Program complete. Let me switch over to the terminal where we run the node program. So node odbc, don't need the .js in there, but away we go. I just love typing. One of the best things they taught me in the Navy. No, won't tell you the rest, not allowed. Here we can see all the records in the customer table. I'll scroll up and down just to show you all the records it's found. Also included in the result set is the metadata about the SQL statement we run and all the column details. Very impressive. Now if I want to run that on my PC, assuming I have a table called QCUSCDT, would be to change the data connection object 
to one I have created on my PC. I'll leave that with you, I'm sure you can figure it out. If you need any further details about open source or IBMI, check out all our videos at learning.formaserve.co.uk and the articles we have written for powerwire.eu. I hope you find them useful and let us know if there are any other topics you want us to cover. Even through these difficult times, my company, Formaserve, is still providing training on our favourite platform, the IBMI. Whether it's remotely, through a mask, we are still here for you. If it's traditional programming using RPG and CL, or the modern methods of integrating open source into your infrastructure, we are here to help. We have over 30 years of teaching on the IBMI. Why not use us to get up to date and be at the forefront of the post-pandemic world? Formaserve uses Microsoft Teams software to develop top-notch training material. Take a look, you will not be disappointed. As many students have found, all our training is very informal, it's the way to learn. Find out what it's like to have fun while training. And that wraps up this quick video. Thank you for watching our How To on IBM I video set. I hope you found them useful. Keep checking out our website learning.formaserve.co.uk and our YouTube channel. We regularly add new ones. Stay safe and we'll see you soon. Thank you.